Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. Hey guys, I hope you're all keeping well. Thanks for coming back and joining me for another video. Before I get started and rambling on about me, my life, my hair and everything else, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that has donated to the channel. On PayPal, I get to see your names and I can often respond and say thank you if you've got your PayPal settings where I can actually respond. So thank you everyone that has ever supported this channel. Channel, it's absolutely amazing. Now I explained in another video that YouTube's changed it where there is a super thanks at the top of the video. When you guys do that I see that it comes up but I don't see which one of you has done it. It's really frustrating so for everyone that has done that again it is greatly appreciated so thank you very very much. So Arundel had a wonderful time at the weekend, it was my mother-in-law's birthday, absolutely beautiful, went past another one of my dream homes. You've got to dream big haven't you? This house has been left to rot and it's truly heartbreaking. I don't know anything about the land who owns it why it's sitting there empty but this is a dream place of mine that if I won the lottery tomorrow I would buy this place I'd renovate the front of it so it was just like a nice loft apartment for me and my husband and the dogs and then the rest of it I would turn it into the biggest rescue center you know a volunteer place where people could come in kids could come in schools I'd rescue donkeys sheep cows I'd rescue everything you know what I'm like I'd have bees <laughs> I'd have hedgehogs I'd, I'd have the lot I would literally she turned that place into the biggest rescue centre in West Sussex, I think. I think it's healthy to have realistic dreams and unrealistic dreams. As I said, that would be only something with a lottery win. So, you know, lottery gods, I am still purchasing a ticket. So please, shine some goodwill this way. Now, what have we got to talk about with the royal family? Well, today, huge day. It was Princess Anne's birthday, the Princess Royal. We love Princess Anne. Generations, different generations love Princess Anne because she is, she's very much like her mother and her father. She is dedicated to the royal family's duty. She does not take any crap. She is not bothered about security. She doesn't like a fuss or fanfare. The military love her. She takes all of her patronages and all of the positions that she's got very, very seriously. She is just admired and respected across royal circles, across, you know, anyone that has basically got anything to do with her being a patron. She's apparently really lovely, really down to earth, really friendly. And for those of you that have only recently joined my channel that may not know, Princess Anne is the only member of the royal family to have genuinely gone through a real kidnapping attempt. Several people got shot, including her personal protection officer, I think a reporter, a crazed gunman. Literally, she was, um, she'd not long been married and he tried to get her out of the car. Um, she was pulling against the car door and he, he was screaming at her to get out. Bearing in mind he'd shot people, you would be terrified. And her response to him was, not bloody likely. Yet despite this terrifying event that happened, Princess Anne still, she doesn't want a fuss with security. She only has security when she attends official royal engagements and yet she's still more down to earth than her nephew and his wife but then I guess it's not about safety and it's everything to do with status and getting free security paid for. She didn't want the titles for Zara and for Peter, she did not want them to be be defined by their status in life by the royal family and they've grown up to be really down-to-earth lovely people obviously I know Peter and Autumn recently broke up they've got two lovely little girls and Zara and Mike are everyone's favorite non-working royals I think they're, they're just brilliant they're so affectionate and sweet when you see them together they're funny and Princess Anne is famously known for having such a wicked vibrant sense of humor I think that yeah you see her laughing with Charles and I just really Really think that she is such a wonderful attribute to the royal family and she is also one of the I think if not the hardest working royals she does more engagements and works more days throughout the year than any of the others so she is a true princess and she's a bit of a legend now with all this stuff to do with princesses being in the news we knew someone was getting a little bit high and mighty a little bit haughty about it over in Montecito wasn't she because as I said in the last video we have princess Meghan princess Meghan and Princess Meghan. So Princess Anne then has her birthday and this is when Harry and Meghan decide to do an announcement. They are darkening our shores once more. 
Now, what is so ridiculous about this, the couple are suing Her Majesty's government, not one court case, but now two over their security concerns. Now, this was absolutely laughable because as many people have pointed out when they came over for the Jubilee, Meghan wound down the window so that she could be seen on her way to the event to ensure that photographs were taken of her. This is not a couple that are scared for their life, that are scared that something is going to happen to them. Now, this is something as well. We are seeing uh, Omid Scobie, typical mouthpiece. We're seeing Shakti Shola, <laughs> if some of you will know who I mean, and lots of other people that are massive Sussex supporters. And we, yes, they exist. And uh, we are seeing them on social media talking about they must have their security, their very, very important security, their IPP status reinstated before something will happen. Now, it's very strange that all of them at the same time are coming out with this. And it makes you think, has there been a telegram sent down the old grapevine building up for their appearance in the UK? Because what could they really do with now an actual security issue that might happen? And we shouldn't joke about that at all, because as much as I dislike the couple, I wouldn't want anything to happen. Obviously, everyone's seen what happened to Salman Rushdie. And that is that's, you know, that is absolutely terrifying. Of course, I don't want anything to happen to Harry and Meghan, but I don't believe it's about safety. If they were visiting the royal family, they get Metropolitan Protected Scotland Yard top of the range security. But they want to have this reinstated so they can basically get free security. They can have security paid for by the UK taxpayers, I'd like to point out as well. It doesn't matter that Harry's saying now that he wants to pay for it. He didn't say he wanted to pay for it originally. And secondly, you can't pay for British UK police. It doesn't work that way. Because if this gets granted that he can pay for it, then any celebrity or any rich person that's coming over from another country can demand for the police to protect them. And I'm not being funny, and this isn't a swipe to all of the police officers out there that do a good job, but there is a lot of the time where the police aren't even taking care of the citizens in the way that they should with the way that it's all being run. So for Harry to be demanding that he, even though he can pay for his own top private security, he can have ex-metropolitan police, it's not good enough, he is demanding that he takes the attention away from the general public. And let's be honest, the general public are probably more at risk these days than what Harry is. But this is where it's so ridiculous, they've announced where they're going to be, the dates, the places. Firstly, they said that they're coming over on the 5th of September for the One Young World Summit. Meghan is to give an opening keynote speech in Manchester. OK, so anyone can now just Google when that's happening, what building it's in, and they know that Meghan's going to be there to open it. So then, oh, then you've got basically oh, date, location, rough sort of time. So this is ridiculous. Who is advising them? Secondly, we know that they're going over to the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. That was always going to be a given. Netflix needs some more content because let's be honest, the Jubilee didn't go the way that they wanted. Boo! So I can imagine that Harry and Meghan are going to be very selective with how much they are seen in public because if the general public, I think, get a chance to be anywhere near them, there is going to be more boos. Which then follows on to they are making an appearance at the World Child Awards. Now, obviously, Harry is one of the patrons of the World Child Awards. And before I start on this, I just want to say, please don't attack the charities, people. I don't like Harry the way he's treated people. But don't go onto their websites and their tweets and their posts, especially World Child, because they actually support families and children that have got all sorts of different health issues and stuff that would potentially end up being cared for in hospital or in specialist homes. This charity enables family to have the support, the care, the finances to take care of their children at home with their families. So that's my rant over on that one. So just, you know, be kind. Oh, I can't even say it. It makes me want to slap myself. It's only because Megan has tainted kindness. And I have just come back from swimming. So as you can see, I can see my face. It's not because I'm ranting. It's because it is very hot. We're expecting thunderstorms at any minute. Um, well, hopefully uh, in the south. And because we need the weather to break. So it's... Whew, so I might be like a red tomato by the end of this video. <laughs> 
So yeah, back to the fact that they have given their location, the dates that they're coming to. So, I mean, how is this going to work with their, their lawsuits? Going, we demand security, we demand protection. By the way, we'll be here on this date, this date, this date, this location, roughly this sort of time. It doesn't make sense. It makes it an absolute joke. I mean, it is a joke anyway. Harry left the UK. Meghan left the UK. They didn't want to be part of the royal family. Well, they want to be half in, half out, which is pretty much kind of in a sort of steamrolling their way through it. What they're kind of doing. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are coming over to do like again, like with New York, they're doing this kind of fake royal visit. You know, this is why they want the announcements made. But yes, so from a normal person's point of view, they've pretty much given a fairly detailed manifesto to the media to be released, right? I mean, the only thing that's missing is the hotels they're gonna stay in. Well, that's another thing. Given Meghan's taste, shall we say, given her taste for the high life, when she goes to Manchester <laughs> and I'm going to go to the well child, there's only going to be certain hotels, really, that they might be staying in. And uh, there'll be a motorcade. Now, don't get me wrong, there will be a motorcade. Whether they've paid for it themselves, whether it's their security to make sure they're in those big Range Rovers, they can't help themselves. They want the attention. But it will just be truly shocking if they get police escorts, because I'm sorry, they left. They're not here in a royal capacity. They are not working for Her Majesty. They are not representing the Queen, the UK, the royal family. This is, as they said, visiting charities that are close to their heart or for content for Netflix. I mean, it's a kind of tick box, isn't it? One young world, young world leaders. Okay, Megan obviously given a keynote speech. It's been a while since Megan's given a speech. She must have been truly chomping her nails, chomping at the bit when Harry was the one that was asked to give one at the UN. So she will be getting up on stage, hopefully no embarrassing tit hugs with people. <laughs> And then, of course, with the Invictus Games, it's going to look great on her CV, you know, injured servicemen and women, military personnel. It's just one big tick box event for her future career in politics. And no doubt, another extravaganza of the next £250,000 worth of wardrobe that she's got, couture outfits, new bits of jewellery to merch. You know that she's going to turn the Invictus Games into a multi-wardrobe change catwalk show. Now, with Will Child as well, they have got lots of other ambassadors and patrons that are turn up and um, basically you know Ed Sheeran was there one year they've got people like diversity you know they're, they're huge I mean Gabby Logan I'm not sure outside the UK you know who she is but she's you know she's pretty big TV icon you've got um, the band scouting for girls you've got Alexandra Burke who I love I'd love to see her on stage but these are pretty big names in the UK but it's the fact that they have to do this big announcement that they're gonna be there why are they doing the announcements I understand everyone knows that they're going to be at Invictus, but it's just this big fanfare all the time. But how can they be screaming from the rooftops about security concerns? As I said, with Meghan, I can't help but feel she wants to come along because she wants to be part of the limelight. She won't let Harry have the World Child Awards on his own. She, she can't. They need to be filmed for the content for Netflix, who need their pound of flesh. Like I said, St Paul's did not go their way at all. So obviously Netflix need more content. They need them doing these sort of, I guess, fake royal tours. I can't help but feel that a lot of it is just contrived. It's to do with, you know, an image, a brand, Megan branding herself. These are the things that she wants to be involved with. And it, again, for a tick box for Netflix, it's making sure that they do have more footage because St Paul's did not work out for them. The Jubilee, they were hit off at the pass, weren't they, by the royal family in the way that it was all managed. And I think that was extremely well played. But recently, there's been another announcement where they are getting an award for, for their efforts and everything that they've done to help the Afghanistan people, the people of Afghanistan, since obviously, you know, Biden pulled out and then everything that happened with the Taliban taking over Afghanistan again. Now, I don't know about you, but the only thing that I remember that Harry and Meghan did for Afghanistan is one, they went to a, a refugee camp and when they were in New York and then were filmed for Netflix doing heads, shoulders, knees and toes with the children while Megan was more interested in looking at the cameraman holding up a pen. Look at her eyeline. She's looking at the camera. She is not looking at the children or engaging with those children. And then the other thing that Archwell, there's never been any announcements of things that they've done, initiatives. They gave a donation. So what, donations buy awards these days? It does seem to be in the world of Archwell. <laughs> and then the only other thing was that post that they did where 
they were truly speechless at what was happening in Afghanistan and there were layers of pain and, and blah, blah, blah. But blah, blah, blah does tend to be the theme of Archwell, really, when you think about any post that they have ever done. Although I must say that Archwell hasn't really done a lot since, well, ever, really. But their website does actually state that the couple are about shared purpose, global action and leading the way in compassion. Let's be honest, Harry and Meghan couldn't lead a piss up in a pub. They couldn't lead a stag do round bars. <laughs> I honestly think that the only leading that Meghan is ever gonna do is probably Harry round the garden on a leash, probably wearing the underpants that she's just had to use Archwell donations to buy off of an ex stripper back in Las Vegas. There's an image for you. You're welcome. So on that lovely cheery note, <laughs> And before my face explodes, I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care for now. Bye. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please, angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers for time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.